Picture yourself in the following situation. You're out in the wilderness and for whatever reason you get lost. Unfortunately, you're not carrying any backpack with heavy gear and the only thing you got is the clothes you're wearing and a tiny knife, like an EDC knife or a pocket knife like this. Can you catch game in order to survive? Yes, you can. And if you want to learn how, join me in this video. Let's go. Today we're going to take a look at a very particular type of snare trap. This one works differently than most of the traditional snare traps, which you can also check up here in my video link. I also did a video on spring snare traps. This one is a different though. It works with yeah, this wooden block here. What this is for I will explain in a second. And what's so great about these traps is that you can craft them easily from natural cordage or maybe you use a boot lace that you strip through here. In my case I'm using sisal and also the anchor right here is very easily crafted and I'm going to show you how it's done and then we talk about the use of this respective trap, all right? As in any survival scenario, you first and foremost need to observe your surroundings to find resources that can be of use to you. In this particular case, you're looking for an elder bush. And once you found an elder bush, you just go there and you cut yourself a tiny fresh twig. It's really important to use green wood and not dried wood because elder bushes have the tendency to become very brittle if they dry. You should then basically get a piece like this, preferably with a straight part right here. You then take your Swiss army knife and you're just basically cutting out a tiny piece. Maybe about the size of the tip of your pinky or a little longer. I usually go for about three centimeters to four centimeters. See? Just like that. This is the piece you want. Quickly in comparison, this is the finished piece and that's my working piece right now. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of material, so you can also build these traps in a sustainable way. Also, if you take a look at the twig that I just took from the tree, I could carve at least one, two, three, four, five, yeah, maybe up to 10 traps out of a tiny twig like that. So that's a very efficient way to go about in a survival scenario. And it also doesn't take a lot of energy. You don't burn a lot of calories in doing so. Anyway, we now have to prepare this piece and I'll show you how it's done. The first thing we got to do is remove the pith from inside the piece of wood. And there's many different ways to go about this. The first one would be using the awl of a Swiss army knife. Great tool. You can just get into the wood, see, and turn it like that. If the wood is too thin, you might also want to give it a try with the toothpick or with the tweezers right here. Let me just demonstrate this for you. See, you can get in there and basically scratch out all of the pith. Maybe you can even see the tiny pieces of sawdust flying out. I'll just finish this, make it hollow, and I'll show you how to continue. After removing the pith, we now need to carve fork tips on the tip right here. And it's pretty simple. Just go in a 45 degree angle across the piece of wood. As you can see right here, this already has an angle here. And then you just do it from the other side too. And if you can see this, we now have two pointy ends. You can sharpen them if you want to. Just do a bit of detail work. I always like to do this so they get as pointy as possible. And that's really important for later on, because if we use this trap, we need those spikes in order to trigger and reflex in the animal. The animal is going to panic due to the pain reaction that this part inflicts and will then strangulate itself. For the next step, we need some type of cordage and you can use anything that comes to mind, whether it's natural cordage that you craft out in the wild by using um, nettles, for example, or maybe just here, 
one of your bootlaces that you have. Um, maybe you're a musician and you're carrying some sort of a guitar string or so, doesn't really matter. But you need a piece of snare or string. And what to do, you take your yeah, pointy piece of elder wood, make a loop and bring that right through here and pull it through like this. Let me show it to you again, just right next to the snare that's already finished. You make a loop and then you have to wiggle it through the back end and the pointy end so that it looks somewhat like this. Then you got two working ends on the flat side of your piece of wood, right? Just show that to you right here. This is what it looks like. Just pull it through like this. In order to finish your snare trap, you now simply need to add an anchor piece to the shorter working end of your yeah, wire, boot lace or whatever you're using. And I just used a simple stick here with a cloth hitch and an overhand knot just to hold it in place. And yeah, what that does is hold your string in place. If you can see this right here, I cannot pull the working end through the piece of wood here. And that's really important because if both ends would be loose, see, you could just pull them out like that and the trap wouldn't work. So always make sure that the short end has an anchor and the long end here will be used to mount it at some kind of yeah, thicket, bush, tree, wherever you go hunting. But yeah, without any further ado, let me just show you how this is mounted and how you catch game with that. In order to catch wild game, you need some basic understanding of tracking. And if you take a look at this right here, here we do see an animal track. I'm not sure if this is from deer or maybe from rabbits, but anyway, I'm just going to follow this and see if it leads me into that thicket, because those are the prime spots to catch tiny game like rabbits or bunnies. Here you can see the track and it led me right into the thicket right here. This spot is perfect because there's a couple of burrows around here and I can mount my trap right on that tree. The trap is almost ready. I would just need to place some bait right here and if a rabbit or a bunny would pass by, it would get through here with the head, pull, as you can see, and basically close the snare around the neck. And these pointy ends will push into the skin of the rabbit or the bunny and due to that reason it will get some kind of a panic reaction due to the pain see it will struggle and it will pull and just basically tighten up the snare and that's how you catch game as simple as that well folks that's basically it but before i wrap up the video one important remark Please do not use this technique unless it's absolutely imperative for your own survival. It's a cruel technique, it hurts animals a lot, it's also creating a lot of stress as we discussed and next to that this technique is illegal in many countries in Europe. I don't know about the states and Canada, some um, provinces there allow it but nevertheless um, don't get yourself into trouble by using an illegal technique. This is for emergencies only and you just learned this skill right now so you can use it if it should be necessary in the future. Okay? Don't do anything stupid with that and yeah if the video was of value to you make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content also subscribe to the channel and other than that I can only say thanks for watching, hope you learned something and then I'll see you in the next video all right? Have a good one and enjoy the outdoors. Take care. If you want to support my channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. You can visit my Patreon page on www.patreon.com slash Bushcraft. A link to my Patreon page will also be posted in the information box below. Thank you in advance.